Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. I'm here to present my next video on Apache Spark. In this video, I'll be discussing what's the difference between the terms data frame, data set and RDD. Uh, I guess we all know that these three terms are nothing but the three APIs we have in Apache Spark. Uh, but there are some key differences which, among these three words. That's why I've actually decided to put up another video, a separate video for this. So we'll be discussing the things step by step right so stay tuned I'll be discussing things in like in sequential fashion first thing is like you can see on the screen that we have like uh, illustrated the um, these three APIs in this fashion like you can see some of the some of the portion of each three terms are overlapped meaning is that they share some 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 they share some common responsibilities they share some common features and we can easily migrate from one uh, API to other right we have some methods available that's the reason actually it is shown like this okay okay so first we start with the RDD what is RDD RDD is nothing but actually it stands for resilient distributed data set a lot of a lot of things have been said about RDD it's not a new term I guess it's a whenever we start learning uh, spark will be first term first thing which is which is which we come across is RDD so RDD is a basic abstraction that Spark provides. Okay, uh, this is how we can define it formally. It's a collection of elements partitioned across the nodes of a cluster that can be operated on in parallel. Meaning is that uh, we don't know what is happening behind the scenes. Like uh, RDD is nothing but kind of a black box. We we, we never know like what is going on like uh, like be, uh, behind the scenes, right? So, but you know that uh, like uh, theoretically we can say that the data has been divided across multiple nodes and the data will be like uh, will be processed in parallel like in the case of MapReduce MapReduce also actually promotes the parallel computation the same way the RDD also like like use the same rule right the, the distributed computation okay so this is how we can define RDD and this is nothing but the I guess uh, we can actually uh, like uh, convey it diagrammatically right you can see we have a node a driver node and you can see this uh, edges this this arrows right and you can see we have multiple worker nodes available and RDD has been stretched across multiple worker nodes right that's why it is shown in the dotted fashion because uh, none of because the portion will be staying on these four worker nodes it means not a single worker node will be containing whole the data the data will be divided across multiple nodes this is what the principle of RDD says right moving forward these are the, some of the features that RDD possesses the first is distributed collection as I've already have like uh, conveyed that the first the RDD uh, actually allows users to write parallel computation using a, a set of high level operators without having to worry about work distribution and fault tolerance it means you can do your work you have don't have to bother about what is going on behind the scenes you can do your work right this is what the distributed collection meaning is next is immutable the meaning of immutable is which the, the thing which we can't change the RDD uh, con composed of collection of records which are partitioned uh, a partition is a uh, basic unit of parallelism in an RDD and uh, each partition is one logical division of data which is immutable and created through some transformation on existing partitions the, actually the ultimate objective of immutable immutable uh, thing is to achieve consistency we need to achieve consistency because we can only achieve consistency if the data is not got modified right data is not got changed this is called immutable third is fault tolerant in case uh, we lose some partition of RDD we can replace the transformation on that partition in a lineage to achieve the same computation rather than doing uh, data replication across multiple nodes which is a very time consuming okay so like uh, RDD got this feature that it has a fault tolerance the characteristic is the basic, I guess, one of the biggest benefit of RDD because it saves a lot of efforts in data management and replication, and thus achieve faster computations. So, fault tolerant is one of the uh, is one of the uh, key characteristic of RDD. Next, we have a lazy evaluation. Lazy evaluation meaning is that uh, the things we actually we need to delay some of the things until and unless we call in one action, all the transformations that we have done in, in a like in early stage will not be called. Uh, the all transformation in Spark are lazy uh, in that uh, they don't do not compute their results uh, right away. Instead, they just remember the transformation applied to some base data set, and transformation are only computed when an action is called. Right? Uh, I guess uh, if you have uh, watched my video on the transformation and actions, then you must have must be aware of the fact what's the transformation, what is action. Last is last we have is functional transformation. 
like uh, RDD support two type of operations which I've already have specified transformations which create a new data set from existing one uh, and actions which return a value to the driver program after running a computation on the data set we have a two type of operations that RDD supports one is transformation which never give you any result it just changes the RDD from one form to other other form or just result a new RDD and the action will give you the actual result right so these are some of the features of RDD now what are different limitations of RDD right uh, why we, uh, we why we uh, haven't stayed on RDD why we actually move to the data set we have some limitations first the RDD uh, first thing is no inbuilt optimization engine meaning is when working with the structured data RDD cannot take advantages of the uh, sparks advanced optimizers include including the catalyst optimizer it doesn't have its own uh, like um, uh, optimization uh, optimization engine okay so that's why we actually we need to shift to other uh, APIs next is handling structured data uh, unlike data frame and data set RDD doesn't infer the scheme of the ingested data and require the users to specify it meaning is like in the case of uh, like a data frame when you create a data frame uh, it actually easily recognize that uh, uh, which is my um, uh, the, which is a, what is the scheme of the given data but it's not in the case of uh, RDD right so handling structured data is one of the biggest problem in RDD third is it is slow for non JVM languages like Python right so it is not actually it is actually slow for these languages like uh, uh, so this is one of the limitation we have in RDD right so the uh, these are some of the limitation which li which motivates the Apache Spark pe people to uh, migrate to the next API right so uh, another question we can uh, we can ask now that if we have these kind of limitations so when you should use the RDD so I have pointed out three different uh, like uh, occasions in which on which you one can use uh, RDD first if you want low level API and control of data set then it's one of the like uh, occasion in which on which you can use the RDD second dealing with the unstructured data then we can use RDD and if you don't care about the schema or structure then you can use RDD but if you actually care about the schema or if you deal with the structured data and if you uh, don't need this low level API then you should migrate to the another another API right next one is data frames okay data frames uh, again it's very popular uh, among the Apache Spark people uh, it's an API right uh, another API we have got and we can uh, like uh, we can define formally uh, in this way like it's a distributed collection of data organized into name columns like uh, I guess the the first line is exactly same as we have discussed in RDD as well that distributed collection of data so what is different now that it is, has been organized into named columns it is actually conceptually uh, equivalent to the table in relational database or uh, R or Python uh, data frame so uh, if you are if you're from a background of SQL or RDBMS then you can easily relate it with the table okay so this is what the data frame is all about this is how we can define you can see in the left side the spreadsheet on a single machine so it's, it's again we have a it's a little table we have or data, little data frame we have but now in the case we talk about the data frame in Apache Spark we have this thing in, is in uh, I guess is a uh, different the data frame is partitioned across the server and data center that's why you can see like in this case uh, like uh, the one of the rows has been partitioned across uh, staying in the one server other row you can see it's another server and the third one is another server it means data has been partitioned across multiple servers in a data center this is what the data frame is all about now what are different features of data frame first uh, as I've already said it's a distributed collection of a row object meaning is uh, as I've said that a data frame is distributed collection of data which is organized into the named columns and it is conceptually equivalent to the table in relational database but with the richer optimization under the hood what what we what 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 things we were missing in RDD is optimization now we have this optimization available in data frame next data processing uh, processing structured and unstructured data formats such as Avro, CSV, uh, Elasticsearch and Cassandra and storage systems like SGFS, Hive tables, MySQL it can read and write from all these various data sources which was missing in the RDD right so we can process structured and unstructured data from multiple sources like I mentioned from the SDFS like the, the, the storage systems like SDFS or the uh, different data formats like Avro, CSV right third one is optimization using catalyst uh, it powers uh, as I've already have said that 
like uh, optimization was missing in RDD. It is actually is a part of data frame. So we have the third feature we have is optimization using Catalyst Optimizer. Uh, like it actually powers uh, both SQL queries and the data frame API. Uh, actually, data frame make use of some Catalyst tree transformation framework in four phases, which I can list here. Uh, first, we need to analyze a logical plan to resolve references then we logical plan then we come to logical plan optimization then we come to the physical planning and then we just come to the code generation so actually it is a more of theoretical stuff and i'll, I'll just uh, make up a separate video for this that how the how the optimization take place uh, within the, the data frame so it is uh, like beyond that scope of this video but the in a, in a in a layman language we can say that the the data or the calculation or processing will be in more optimized fashion than in rdd right next we have a hive compatibility meaning is like uh, um, like you know that uh, we have Apache, Fi Apache Hive available like in the case of uh, Apache Hadoop ecosystem and we have the this now data frame available like both actually make use of some SQL uh, kind of a queries so we have some Hive, Hive compatibility as far as data frame is concerned right these are some of the features that data frame has now come to the limitation part compile time type safety so uh, I guess uh, you must be aware of this fact that what's the meaning of compile time uh, type safety? Uh, a data frame API does not support compile time safety, which limits you from the manipulating data when the structure is not known, right? This is a limitation with data frame API. Data frame uh, uh, API is, uh, is concerned, right? So this is one of the limitation we have. That's why which actually mo uh, actually uh, motivates us to further go to the data set. So I guess I'm just like uh, like just uh, recalling both the RDD and uh, data frame. So RDD, uh, if if we just compare this with the RDD or the data set, uh, actually in this case RDD and data set are actually are having upper hand because both RDD and data set are type safe. Means the compiler knows the columns and its and its type data type of the column whether it's long string etc. But in the data frame, every time when you call an action. Uh, okay, then it will return the result as an array of rows, not as long string data type. This is a limitation we have in data frame, but uh, this is how it's different from uh, like um, from RDD and uh, data set with respect to this type safety feature, right? Next is data set, the third API we have got in the Apache Spark. So data set is an actually added as an extension of data frame. Okay, it has been actually inherited from the data frame. Now, if you just read the documentation of uh, recent Apache Spark, you will get to know that it's uh, now the basic abstraction, the, uh, the Spark is falling, not RDD, right? So a data set combines the features of both RDD. It means it's uh, taking advantage of the positive features from both these APIs. Like in RDD, it is uh, uh, taking the uh, it is taking the uh, advantage that it is a compile time type safety, which I've already have mentioned in the previous slide, as well as it is taking the advantage of data frame that uh, the data, data frame actually making use of automatic optimization. So these actually the features has been now uh, it's actually has been inherited, and it is coming in the data set. So that's why data set is is I, I'll say is the best of the, these three, right? So this I have taken from Databricks website. Okay, so what's the meaning of these words which we have written here? Like uh, it's an untyped API and typed API. This actually a figure or this image you will find in the Databricks website as well. That's why I've mentioned uh, its source as well. So data frame APIs are untyped APIs since the type will only be known during the runtime, right? Whereas data set APIs are the typed APIs right uh, for which the type will be known during the compile time this is the difference between untyped api and typed api that's why actually i've, I've uh, mentioned here that you can see that uh, now we have unified uh, both the terms at both the terms and now we call it as data set now in the recent versions of spark i guess post 2 uh, this was is written here as well unified apache spark 2.0 like 2.x version of spark actually make use of data set as a basic abstraction right Okay, uh, if we just move to the features of data set, first, uh, as I've already said that it provides best of both RDD and data frame. Actually, what are, whatever the, the advantages the RDD and data frame has got, it actually has, it has actually coming in the data set. Next, it's making use of some encoders. So encoders actually, as I've already said that uh, with the use of encoders, it is very easy to convert any JVM object into the data set, allowing the users to work with both structured and unstructured data, unlike data frame. 
Uh, then we have our type safety as we have already have I mentioned that dataset API provides compile time safety which was not available in the data frame. So this is how the data set is different from the data frame. Now if we just now come to like the to the conclusion this that uh, we can I can only say that choice of when to use RDD or data frame it seems obvious while the former means while the RDD offers you the low level functionality and control the latter means the data set or data frame offers you a custom view and structure it offers a high level operations saves space and executes at a superior speeds so the uh, the best of three is definitely the data set I hope you must have understood the three APIs that we have got in the uh, Apache Spark. In case, uh, like, if you feel something is not understood or if I've said it wrong somewhere, please comment on my video and let me know. Your your feedback is highly appreciated. Thanks for watching. See you next video.